Fantastic! Now we get to think about that for the next week and a half. What's cracking, everybody, and welcome to Kraken r &R, where, if you can't already tell, the Seattle Kraken basically started their vacation early as they lose 2 to nothing to San Jose before the 10 or 11 day break, whatever it is, they basically decided to not show up to San Jose and this game. And I already said it in the last video that this was a trap game. You're already thinking about that vacation. It's in the back of their heads for sure, at least a little bit. And you're up against a team that you have no business losing to. Even if they have been playing better of late, they'd won three of their last four, or four, three, and one, I think, in their last eight. But this is still a Sharks team that you should absolutely be taking care of. Unfortunately, the Kraken came in, and well, it wasn't their worst played game for the first two periods. The third period, where it all comes down to is it 0-0 going into that third, the Kraken just play a lazy, sloppy game that eventually allows the Sharks to get that one goal. And that's all that matters, is they can't get anything back the other way. Eventually, the empty net gets hit, and that gets you to that 2 to nothing score. I mean, at least it would have been nice if they had told us to not waste our time watching this game, because they weren't going to show up for it. Instead, it's 7.30, one of the latest games of the season, and the Kraken don't get anything on the board. And... I wouldn't necessarily say they didn't show up entirely for this game. That's probably putting it a bit strong, although strong is probably fair considering they get shut out by one of the worst teams in the NHL, and it's the second year running that that's happened. They lost 4 to nothing to the same Sharks team last year, actually a slightly better version of this Sharks team last year. So I guess if you want a silver lining, they did still make the playoffs and won a round after looking embarrassingly bad against a Sharks team that they got shut out by in San Jose. So who knows, maybe this is the lowest of the low for the Kraken this season, but it's a pretty low low going into a long break. And again, this is a team that has not necessarily had a great track record of coming out of long breaks strong. Not to mention the fact that unlike last year, where the Kraken had a pretty good handle on a playoff spot at this point, or at least when they lost to the Sharks, this year they are in a dogfight with five or six other teams for one of two wildcard spots. And they had a golden opportunity to get up into the same amount of points as the two teams in those wildcard spots. And just today alone, blew an opportunity to get two more points back on the St. Louis Blues, who they handed those two points with that third period comeback just a few games ago, as the Blues had their own terrible performance before their break, getting shut out one to nothing by another bad team in the Blue Jackets. So the Kraken, who could have gained two points on the Blues, gotten right up into that 50-point mark or 54-point mark with the teams that are in those wildcard spots, instead waste that opportunity entirely, and now are still two points back with those teams having games in hand as they go into their 10-day break and come out of it with a long East Coast trip against some pretty good teams. As for the game itself, we can get through it pretty quickly here. Again, there's just the one goal aside from the empty netter. The Kraken start out the game pretty well. They really dominate the Sharks in the first period. At the end of it, it's shots on goal 12 for the Kraken, 3 for the Sharks. The Kraken pretty much have the puck the entire period. The Sharks barely touch the puck, especially in the Kraken end of the ice. They have less than a minute with the puck in Seattle's defensive end. But at the same time, the Kraken come out of that period with absolutely nothing on the scoreboard, including a power play that they got in there. A power play that did actually look pretty good. They got a lot of offensive zone time, a number of shot attempts. I think only three officially on net, but four or five that were right up towards the net. Plenty of at least good looks, nothing particularly dangerous, and nothing particularly dangerous is kind of the motto of the Kraken offense in this game as a whole. But it's a power play that, honestly, the Sharks are lucky to get out of without the Kraken scoring. Unfortunately, the Kraken don't score the entire period with those 12 shots on net. So we go to the second period where the Kraken look even worse offensively, only getting six shots on net, though I suppose to be fair, their best scoring opportunity of the game does come in this second period. It's a great play started by Tolvanen in that Gord line. Tolvanen on the forecheck, steals the puck behind the net, gets it up to Gord, who quickly gets it out to Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand fires off a shot that really should have been in the back of the net, but it just clangs off the post and ends up bouncing out to the far side, going right along the goal line for a bit. So just a hair more on the inside, or maybe the puck at a little bit of a different angle, and that is in the back of the net to give the Kraken the one and nothing lead. Unfortunately, the Kraken, for everything that they did poorly themselves, also couldn't get anything as far as puck luck is concerned and get that one bounce that they might have deserved after the first and second period. But still, as we go into the third frame, the Kraken are leading the shots on goal, 18 to 8 with just five more shots for the Sharks and the Kraken a decent chance to set a franchise record for shots against in a game. Unfortunately, that's when the third period happens and it's a third period where the Kraken, even if they played decently in the first two periods and just couldn't quite get that lucky bounce or extra little finish to get the puck in the net, they just 
take their vacation early at the end of the second and don't show up for the third. I mean, sure, technically, the Kraken do get the same 14 shots on goal that the Sharks get in this period, but for the Sharks, that's 14 shots in a single period where they had just eight coming in in the previous two. Meanwhile, for the Kraken, well, honestly, the Sharks looked like the better team, even if the shots on goal are equal. The Sharks look like the team that's battling for a playoff spot, while the Kraken look like the team that's happy to take that extra little two-point loss and get a better spot in the lottery at the end of the season. Because while the Kraken, even if they hadn't scored, had kind of controlled play, not even kind of, had definitely controlled play in the first two periods, in this third, the Sharks had the puck for the majority of the time and definitely were shoving it down towards the Kraken end of the ice. And eventually, it's that pressure that they end up capitalizing on where the Kraken couldn't for the first 40 minutes. It's a play where the Kraken are just lazy on the back check, allow the Sharks to get it in towards the net, eventually out circling it up to the top where Vlasic takes a shot on net that might have been screened a bit either way it beats Joey over his shoulder and into the top corner of the net to give the Sharks the one to nothing lead and yes I don't think I mentioned it earlier Joey was in net once again no it's not Grubauer who's been sitting healthy on the bench for over a week now after returning from that long injury and recovery stint it's Decord being trotted out to start the most games in January of any goaltender in the NHL and yes, he's been fantastic, and as it turns out, the Kraken really needed a very good performance in net because they couldn't do anything offensively at the other end of the ice in this game, but this is very much a game where you should have easily been able to start Grubauer and give Decord a little bit of an extra rest going into this vacation. So hopefully he can get some good rest here over this long break because the one thing the Kraken cannot afford is to burn out Decord and not have anybody going into the last stretch of the season in March or if they somehow make it there once they make it to the postseason. But again, I don't really think it's worth harping on too much for this game specifically, considering, again, Decord, in spite of how much he's been played, did give the Kraken every opportunity to win this game. So at least as far as this specific game is concerned, that coaching decision didn't make the difference. In fact, it gave the Kraken a pretty good chance to win the game. They just couldn't get anything to happen at the other end of the ice. Now, had Joey gotten lit up in this game, we would be having a very different discussion, but he managed to bail Hackstall out for what still was a pretty questionable choice to continue to start him and not at least platoon him a little bit with Grubauer, who he did say pretty recently was still an important part of this team going down the stretch. We have yet to see him actually put that into action with Grubauer starting any game so far, but maybe that'll happen on the East Coast road trip when they're playing more difficult opponents. Anyway, to get back to the game where there's still 14 minutes left after this goal goes in for the Sharks, more than enough time for the Kraken to get back to how they played, especially the first period, but really even good chunks of the second period, and that should be good enough to at least tie this game to send it overtime, if not take the lead and score twice in these last 14 minutes to just win it outright like you should have done from the start. Instead, the Kraken really let the Sharks press a little bit more, not responding to the goal very well, eventually they start to get slow momentum back the other way. McCann puts another one off the post, so the Kraken did hit the metal a few times in this game, just couldn't get one to get that little extra inch inside the net to bounce off the post and go in or just, yeah, graze the post, whatever it was to get the puck into the net. They did manage to beat Blackwood a couple of times. They just couldn't beat the plumbing behind him on top of it. Aside from that shot from McCann, though, and one play that the Kraken finally got some presence up by the net, which really was the big problem for them offensively in this game, that was Tolvanen up in front of the net. He just couldn't quite find the five-fold to get it through Blackwood. The Kraken really just don't have any dangerous chances in this game. They don't get really any presence in front of the net. It's the reason they don't score in the first two periods is that while they did have a lot of shots on goal, they were not getting particularly dangerous looks aside from that one play in the second period that that third line had. A lot of shots from the outside with no screens or tips out in front. The Kraken just not getting any presence in front of the San Jose net. And while Blackwood did make 32 saves for the shutout, there weren't a ton of difficult ones among them. So eventually, with under two minutes left, the Kraken go empty net, and while it does take a while, the Sharks eventually hit that empty net after a couple tries to make it two to nothing with 19 seconds left. And in that 19 seconds, there are a couple more decent scoring opportunities that happen in that time, but they're both for the Sharks. Two good saves from Decord prevent this game from becoming three to nothing and really embarrassing the Kraken on their way out the door but they still managed to embarrass themselves pretty well with the 2-0 shutout and completely blowing the chance for two points that should have been easily theirs in this game. So there you have it. The worst Kraken loss of the season, at least so far anyway, and there were some pretty bad losses there in the middle of November, certainly during that losing streak, the 2-0 shutout, same score against the Senators, another bad team on the road. 
There's the loss to the Blackhawks. They are also a very bad team, although at least they had Bedard in that game. There's a couple other ones mixed in there. Certainly the losses to the Oilers when they were stumbling and bumbling their way through the first couple of months of the season for them. Obviously, it looks a little bit less bad with the record that they have and the winning streak they have. But one more time, what really puts the icing on the cake for this one, and to me makes it easily their worst loss of the season to this point, is not necessarily the team they lost to, though that's pretty bad, or how they lost almost equally as bad. It's when they lost this game, a very meaningful point in the season, not just before a long break where now they'll have to sit on this game all the way through the vacation, which I really hope that this game is sitting sour in their mouths the entire vacation and they come back from it with a vengeance and looking to prove something because they're going to need to after this performance as it completely wastes one of their best opportunities left in the season to pick up points on the teams in that wild card race, especially a team like the Blues who had a terrible loss of their own against the Blue Jackets the same night. Not to mention that, again, it would have given the Kraken a chance to tie in points those teams that still have a game or two in hand in them for that wild card spot. Anyway, with all that being said, I don't want to waste any more of my time on this game as the Kraken already wasted all of our time having to watch this horrendous performance, especially in the third period, which as it turns out is the most important period of the game because they couldn't be bothered to finish anything offensively in the first two periods when they had the Sharks on their back heel. So with that being said, three stars, again, if you want to help decide three stars, the Patreon link is down below and you can help decide three stars after every game aside from this one where there are no stars in this game. It shouldn't come as a, too much of a surprise. I suppose if you do want to think optimistically or glass half full, you could maybe make an argument for Decord getting a star. He does make 21 saves or 20 saves on 21 shots. And that is on top of the workload that he's had here over this last month and really month and a half since getting the job from Grubauer. And I suppose it's not really his fault that the rest of the team was already thinking about where they were going to be playing golf in the next week. But at the end of the day, they're a team. They didn't show up for this game. So no stars for me in this one. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below if you would like to give Decord a star or if there's somebody else that you think played well enough to get one. Again, they didn't play necessarily terribly in the first two periods of the game. But the outcome is bad enough that it kind of dampens what you might have been able to say positively about those first 40 minutes. With that being said, if you have made it to this point, thank you very much for making it here and especially watching this video after whatever that game was. Hopefully the team will at least show up to actually start playing games again when they return to start that road trip on the 10th of February in Philadelphia. But until then, we have to sit with this sour taste in our mouths. And again, hopefully that will be somewhat of encouragement for the team to not lay another egg as they come out of this road trip, which they did kind of come out of the all-star break last year, pretty flat. But with that, as always stay safe out there. Be good to each other. God bless. Enjoy the break as much as you can after what the Kraken just did go Kraken.